this is Dave Felberg, and I am Team Infinite Disc 2019 and beyond. I started playing disc golf in 1997 in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I was at the University of Western Michigan, and I was just hanging out with my friends one day, and we always met to play basketball or football or do some kind of activity after class. And this day, I couldn't find anybody at the court or at the field, so I went over to the house where we all hung out, and I noticed that they were all gone again. And I heard all this scurrying upstairs. I said, hey guys, what's going on? They said, we're going floffing. And I said, floffing? What is that? They're like, just get in the car, we'll take you with us. So I got in the car, they drove me out to the local course, which was called Colebrook Park in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And they handed me a Barracuda and didn't tell me anything. And they said, we're playing for 25 cents a skin. And by the end of the day, I lost 18 times 25, which is only about $4. But we were very competitive. So I left, I went home and I picked up a disc at the in-flight sports, which was in Kalamazoo, Michigan at the time, one of the big disc dealers. And I went out and played myself. And I practiced twice. And so the next week on that Tuesday, when I came around, they were all standing around with basketball, getting ready to play. And I said, hey, let's go floffing. And they said, okay. So we went out to the course and I won two bucks back. And my buddy Brian looked at me and said, hey, hold on, you've been practicing. I said, yeah, I played twice. He's like, dude, we've been playing since we were sophomores in high school. We play at least once a week. You shouldn't be able to beat us by now. Um, maybe you should go out for a league. And that's how I started. I went to the Kalamazoo K Aces League. I think it's called the Basket Cases. And that was my first league. And Larry LeBon introduced me to disc golf with Pat Hawks and Scott Wilson from Club Dead. And that's where it started. I started touring in 1999. I was the first amateur disc golf sponsored. I was sponsored by Dead Eye Disc, which was a tie-dye company out of Kalamazoo, Michigan. He paid all my entry fees to be on the tour with the Winnie Crew, which was Todd Branch, Al Shack. Later on, we added Sue Stevens, and we had our dogs, Storm and Heiser, and we headed out. And these were the first people to, what they say, quit their job, play disc golf. And they literally went out with no money and challenged all the disc golfers around the world traveling week to week and played for their food and their gas. And at the first, I had no chance at it. They basically just let me sleep in the luggage rack. I slept up top, I played amateur for half a year. By 2000, I started playing in the professional ranks and then it took from there. But I see that the major differences between today's touring professionals and back then is that I see is there's a lot less camaraderie and there's a lot less unity. And I think that that comes with growth and there's nothing we could do about it. But back in the day, there was only, you know, so many of us who could shoot the course record. So when we came off the course, we would be the first ones, you know, coming off the course, we'd be waiting there and everybody who was good would be waiting there and saying, how'd you shoot Dave? How'd you shoot Bob? How'd you shoot Larry? And that kind of information, you know, we all sat around, we talked about it. We may have dinner afterwards, didn't matter who you played for. But now it seems like it's more about brand and everybody sticks with the people that play with their discs and they only meet up with their kind of, let's say groupies or followers. And I think that, you know, that's taken away that unity feel that everybody loved Frisbee golf. And I think now it has become disc golf as a sport where we've separated that, almost that hippie family feel has gone into a real sport feel. And if you head out to a professional tournament today, it feels like a sport. You know, you, you feel like people are videoing and watching and they're being more serious. And you know, that comes with less camaraderie, but I feel that it's going somewhere. Was it more enjoyable back then? Of course, we were a family. You know, we were the Frisbee family. Today, they got their own type of family and I'm sure the kids are enjoying themselves. and. Uh, I look to see what they're going to do in the future. Well, you know, thinking about sponsorships, you know, the history of my sponsorship, as I mentioned, was Dead Eye Disc was my first sponsor. And then moving into manufacturers, most people don't know this, but in 2000, 1999-ish, the first year of the Witty Crew, I was on, I was kind of sponsored by Gateway Disc because Innova wouldn't take me yet. I had to be Ken Climo. And I was working to be Ken Climo, but I didn't have a sponsor. So Gateway Disc Sports kind of sponsored me a bit for about a half year to a year before I got sponsored by Innova Champion Discs. Then I was sponsored by Innova Champion Discs for, I think 11 years, and which was a long 11 years because I played 40 events a year. I played about 500 events with Innova Champion Discs. Then what happened, which most people don't know, is that without any two details, is I was somewhat involved in the beginning of Prodigy. And that's all I can say at this point. I don't wanna you know, cause any issues, but I was involved in that and that caused me to 
you know, start looking at different opportunities in life. What, you know, where was I going to be when I was 40, like today? And one thing that worried me was that a Nova champion being a top company, you know, they take care of who the best is. But once you're not the best, there's so many kids behind you. And I worried that I wouldn't have anything. So I, you know, after deciding that, you know, Prodigy wasn't a good match for me, I decided to contact Latitude 64 in Sweden. I had a great relationship with Thomas Ekstrom, Dave Burlong, and Savante Erickson at the time, and approached them and said, hey, would you be interested in partnering with me and letting me take more of a career role instead of a player role? And they agreed to that, and then that's when around the same time they brought in Dynamic Discs and partnered with them, and you've seen the growth of Trilogy. I was a lot through a lot of parts of that. I brought in many world champions from Ricky Wysocki to junior world champions, and I helped grow that company. Now, as a manufacturer sponsor, I realized that it's time for me to part ways. You know, manufacturer sponsorship is great, but I'm trying to build a career in disc golf and give back to the sport at a level that nobody in my position has ever done. And to do that, I'm gonna have to not wear the one hat. So as you can see, I'm not wearing a manufacturer's hat today, and it's the first time you've never seen me without one on my head. And the reason for that is, and I call it the Steve Dodge rule, and let's give Steve Dodge credit. He started a great tour there, the professional tour. Um, it's been very successful over the last couple of years. He used to work for Vibram Discs, and he wasn't even a player, but he worked for them. And he realized after one year on the pro tour that that was a conflict of interest, being with one company, but trying to promote all the rest. So what we've decided, and me and Cynthia and the people that support me, that we make sense for us to be multi-branded with the Next Generation Tour, which then makes me a multi-branded player. So I can't just be one branded anymore, as it doesn't make sense, and it doesn't help grow the tour. So this will be the first time someone who's rated over 1020 was has chosen to not be sponsored by a manufacturer on the hope of growing something that's bigger than just the manufacturer and a player relationship. During that time of being on tour and today I had some pretty big moments in my disc golf career and I would say that some of the biggest moments for me stand out as making the finals lead card at the Amateur Worlds. I had gone to the Amateur Worlds in 1997, it was my first PDJ sanctioned tournament and they gave me the disc that I use today still and I showed up with another disc and a towel and I got 190th out of 210. But I saw people with caddies and bags and I saw technique and so I went back home and I practiced for a whole year and I came back in 1999 and I went to Kansas City and I was in second place going into the final night. I choked and back then the top 16 got to play in the final nine, not just the top four. So I dropped all the way to seventh place, but I still got seventh in the world from 190th and I felt pretty great. So that was one of my biggest accomplishments, I thought. And that's what got me the notice of the people like the Witty Crew and sponsors like Dead Eye Disc, which put me on tour. And then the next big breakthrough I felt in my career was my first pro win, which wasn't even a sanctioned win. Um, Al Shack was a tough mentor. He was taught me a lot, but he was more of like that hard, hard love kind of coach. And when I was turning professional in 2000, people would kind of called me a sandbagger because I was the first touring amateur. And I told him I was turning pro the next year and he kind of gave me a hard time and said things like, yeah, but you'll never beat me. You're not on the level. So I trained all that winter with Tom Branch while Al was taking you know, some time off. And the first tournament of the year before we left was the um, 12 Discs of Christmas, which was held just after Christmas at Oshawa Park. And guess what? I got my first professional win beating Al Shack by two strokes heads up to going down the final nine holes. And so that gave me the confidence that I, I knew what I was doing, you know, that playing professional disc golf made sense. But then I ran into another rut and I couldn't find a sponsor like, you know, a Nova Champion or somebody like that. So I made friends with some of the top professionals and I went to the company and I said, what do I got to do? What do I got to do to make this team? You know, back then there was only maybe about 10 people on the team. And they said, beat Ken Climo. I said, wow, beat Ken Climo. All right, that's pretty tough. Nobody beats Ken Climo, right? Well, guess what? I trained for another two years with Ken, and in 2002, I went in the first tournament of the year, was at Titusville, and I beat Ken Climo, and they put me on the end of a champion team with a letter from Ken Climo, and I became sponsored. Thought that was a big moment. And then playing-wise, achievement-wise, obviously, my first major championship was in uh, 2005, where I won the United States Disc Golf Championships. 
it was a, a big moment for me because I was only ranked about 20th in the world. Uh, people didn't think I had a real shot at it. And Barry and Kenny had been the only players to win that tournament. It was almost like, who's going to win, Barry or Ken? And I was able to step up in the final round and play really well and beat Barry Schultz heads up and claim be the first person to claim a USDGC title outside of the Climo Schultz error. So that was big, that kind of launched me into the mainstream and I took that confidence and I started winning majors. And every year after that, I won another major. I won the Players' Cup in Florida, I won multiple Scandinavian Opens and European Opens, and then by 2008, I won the World Championships. That was a huge moment for me because as any player in any sport, being the best is the goal. And you know, being able to tell my kids someday that hey, I was the best at one moment. Your father was the best at something in the whole world. And you know what, that was tough. I could tell people that the semifinals round on Saturday morning, I was playing a course I'd played a hundred times. And when they blew that horn, I couldn't throw. I bogeyed the first four holes and almost lost the tournament. I gave up an eight stroke lead in four holes. But then I battled back and claimed the title. But that, that, that feeling inside is it just, it's nothing compares to trying to be a world champion in something. And then after that, you know, I had many accomplishments from c coaching the first national champion college team at University of Oregon and taking them as a coach to the national championships. I, you know, did lots of schooling and different things with programs. And most recently, I started the Next Generation Tour. Next Generation Tour is the best amateur experience in disc golf, providing the most tournaments and most players worldwide. And it's something that I, I work with my partner, Cynthia Feldberg, to help me grow. And so we're proud of that. And I guess most recently, my biggest accomplishments is I won a national tour and a Masters World Championship with Lat 264 Dis. I feel that that's an accomplishment because I played with Innova for many, many years. And to make that switch and still be able to beat the top players in the world by winning a national tour event, and then this last year being able to win the Masters World Championships in Kansas City, I think that's an accomplishment, especially since if you follow me in my career, I had some serious neck surgery. I had a fusion where they took out my C6, I think it is, or C5. They took it out, they put in a fake bone, they put a plate in there, and they said I'd never quite be the same. And a year later there I was the world champion in Kansas City. So those are some of my accomplishments. I'm sure there's many that I left out, but I don't want to sit here and talk about myself all day. I just wanted to give you a, a kind of a highlight of what sticks out to me as a player. said in the beginning of this, Dave Felberg, Team Infinite Disc. That's right, you heard that. I'm gonna be playing for Team Infinite, but some of you may be thinking right away, Team Infinite, that means he's gonna be throwing the Infinite Disc line, right? Because they make discs. Well, yes, they make discs, but that's not their main business. Their main business has always been the largest online retailer in the United States currently. I thought the partnership with them made sense, A, because I can work with them with the Next Generation Tour and growing that, and since I have to be able to throw all brands and be open to all brands, they're the largest producer, largest pusher of all brands in the United States. I think it makes sense. And I like the opportunity of where they're going. You know, like I said, besides being the largest retailer, they have a great website, customer service, a large staff. They had this quiet approach to growing their company. It didn't come out and just market their way with the top players. They grew it from the grassroots up and now it is what it is. So I find that that partnership's good. And I'm just looking for somebody who can, you know, me and Cynthia always call it Tony Hawkett which means basically Birdhouse. Birdhouse brought in players from all different brands and he worked with them and didn't matter what brand they were. And he promoted all of them equally and if your brand, whatever brand promoted the kit, they promoted that also. And Infinite gives again that opportunity because with the introduction of the 2019 Next Generation team, which I can't tell you who's gonna be on it yet, but you'll be blown away. But when I, that team, I have to be able to um, have the, the opportunity to allow them to do whatever brand they want, whatever endorsement they want, and whatever mixture of products they want without making them feel like they're cornered into one manufacturer or one product line. And I think that's the future of the sport. You've never seen a sport, and this is the last thing I'll say about it. Think about a sport where you see people using inferior product to claim world championships or national championships. Never been done before. People, whether they're golfers, tennis players, basketball players, they choose the best product that works for them. It might not be the best product that works for everybody, but they go out, they test the products, and it may be a combination of brands or one brand, but they always use the brand that works the best for them so they can get the best results of their game. And in disc golf, a lot of times players are taking on sponsorships just so they can feel that sponsorship feeling. 
and they may love one part of the product, but some other part of the product that they're now forced to use may not be optimum for their game or their use on the course. So I'm trying to push people into the realization that use what's best for you, and when you get to the level that you really need a manufacturer sponsor, like Paul McBeth or Ricky Wysocki or Kevin Jones, somebody like that, that's when you go after the big contracts. Until then, you should use what makes you the best, and they'll come find you, just like Infinite Disc did with me. Just a real quick, my plans for 2019 as Team Infinite member, as you know that you know I'm not gonna be able to play as much disc golf in 2019 as me and Cynthia are having our first baby boy. And uh, he is gonna be born on February 18th. So I'm gonna be taking kind of a light spring when it comes to play. My first event back will be the Jonesboro Pro Tour. And then I've got scheduled about a dozen events throughout the year that include the Masters World Tie Championships, the Pro World Championships, the USDGC, the Tim Selinski, uh, the Great Lakes Open, Delaware Open, the Augusta Hall of Fame Classic at the end of the year, and then a couple small A-tiers regionally that are close to my house like Huck Central, Tennessee States, and two days in May up at the Grange. But besides that, I have a very light schedule. It's the lightest schedule I've ever played in my career. I will pick that back up in 2020 and 2021, but in 2019 I want to focus on the first year of the baby. Now, I have other plans playing is not all I do you know that now that's why I'm on Team Infinite Disc. I'm also going to be doing a lot of product reviews, blogs, catch up my social media so that you guys can follow me and I can actually keep up on it and then finally one of the most important things I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing like a podcast two different types. They're either be a podcast or a YouTube we're trying to decide it but they're both one's going to be based on product reviews where I'm going to be bringing in players that are 700 rated, 800 rated, 900 rated, and myself, and we're going to be reviewing the new products on the market and comparing products between brands, since I don't have any brands loyalty right now. That's one thing. The other podcast or video that we're working on is we're going to work on an instructional piece called Dave Felberg's Infinite Instructional Corner or something like that. You'll see the name soon. But basically, it'll be a monthly piece where you can go on Infinite Disc, log in, and get a instructional piece from me. And I'm going to try to make it so that it's a series, so that it makes sense that you can build on it. And I feel that between those two, I mean, it's going to keep me quite busy videoing stuff and testing products. But So I hope that you at home will support these couple ideas that we're doing with Infinite Disc. And uh, those are my plans for 2019.